Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today we are outside. The sun is shining. It's absolutely wonderful weather. It's freezing cold, but the sun is shining from a cloudless sky and it's perfect for solar. We have had a record low number of solar uh, hours in November, December and most of January. Uh, so here in February the sun is out and um, at that point I realized that I made a grave mistake on my solar panels. Last year I reconfigured them to have four panels in series because on the back of the solar panels it says that they, they reach about 30 some volts and uh, calculating that I figured that uh, they would never reach the 150 volts that the, the charge controller's limit is. So um, yeah, I reconfigured everything to be four in series and then in this beautiful weather where it's icy cold and full sun the solar panels are almost at 40 volts, so I have seen like 158 volts coming out of the solar panels and that is way too much and the charge controller just doesn't do anything, it just ignores it and uh, in all of this beautiful sun that's a bloody shame. So um, uh, yesterday I went uh, and reconfigured the solar panels and as it is bloody cold and as it is high voltage and as it is not ideal conditions for making stuff uh, I just did a ninja hack. Yeah I kind of just disconnected the last panel and each of these three rolls so um, instead of uh, the cable in here going out there and attached to this last panel well it's just attached to the panel next to it so yeah I'm only at nine panels right now but it's way better than none at all just been out shopping I need to carry that inside but I thought I better start this video while the Sun is out and shining and and all is good so we are actually going down to the basement because um, I have some new battery stuff that I want to show you oh down here in the DUI dungeon do it yourself creepy basement um actually over here I just hear this there we are also producing warm water it's 40 degrees 41 degrees C upstairs on the solar collectors and they are pumping down heat for my water heater so even though it's minus five six degrees outside I am actually getting warm water ish I would like a couple of degrees more if I'm gonna bait in it but um but it's free heat it's energy that is not gonna go on to my power bill which makes it kind of free so awesome let's check battery banks here we are I'm building this one and um, I, I ran out of this uh, plate nickel nickel metal thing here so I had to order that got a funny story about that it looks like this when you get it I ordered three meters from China and then the day after I thought I'm gonna have to wait months for that to get here so um, uh, I found it locally and this is actually the local the local stuff that I bought it took three weeks to get here from like 55 kilometers away the the stuff from China that I ordered came in <laughs> just a week after that but I ordered the new stuff that I'm gonna be showing you in the United States uh, battery hookup and this is fused nickel metal strip thing um, this tiny little wire here acts as a fuse so uh, when we're gonna put that on I'm just gonna mount it on, on the tiny thing in here and then every battery is gonna be fused with about 8 amp fuse unfortunately I do not have anything that can just pump out 8 amps ah, I would have liked to test that but it's gonna make it so much easier this is not hard to put on and I do not expect this to be much harder to put on but on the other side of this battery bank is where I fuse everything and this sucks this is a lot of work putting on all of these tiny little fuses I tried to use this um, oh this is actually working very well this tiny little spot welder that's the best spot welder I have tried so far by far using it for these tiny little fuses well it's not great for that it's um, it burns the fuses and yeah I have actually kind of I think I'm gonna solder them because I don't trust them 
to to actually have a good connection so i'm gonna i'm gonna drop that idea and and as this is probably the last battery i'm gonna do with these fuses um i'm gonna stick to the soldering because i know how that works and this is this is dodgy so um but first i think we should do a bit of this so you can you can see it again the spot welder works really well so i'm gonna turn it around put it on the other side have to be a little bit careful don't want it to come apart it can still fall apart on me there so here we need some of this and this is uh, very easily uh, what do you call it? Shortened down with a normal pair of scissors. Actually, you can see the remains of my last endeavor on that. So uh, it needs to go right there. I see I have a battery here that I have been soldering on. So yeah, that's gonna be fine. So just needs to go there, and we shorten it, and I make sure to. to cut it so that there is some metal on the other side of these holes here and then we shorten this off and I want those to fall down somewhere else this thing will just go on there for this to work well uh, we don't want those spikes on the back of the batteries and I usually go ahead and I measure all the batteries just to make sure that I'm not putting this in and there's a bad battery uh, so we might just want to do that. Top one, 4.1. That one is a little bit low. Nothing really bad. Uh, if there is something like two volts or something, that's really bad and we don't want that. Put that on. I usually put the spot welder on top of this box. Uh, sh um, would be nice if I oh, if I could mount it to something. Uh, it, it it tips over. That's that's kind of irritating. I might wanna let's find another solution for that. There we are. <laughs> yeah, product development right in front of your eyes. So let's turn this on. Long press. If you don't use this, this device will discharge itself purposely down to, uh, I think it was about 50%, I'm not sure, but to not ruin the battery inside. Uh, you can charge it fully up and it will stay fully charged for, I think they said about five days. And after that, it's going to discharge itself down to, to 50% to, um, to prolong the battery life. So now we're going to just put this on. I. Uh, kind of just put it down there make sure that it fits and then we, we take this and as soon as I touch them uh, there's a tiny delay and it will spot weld there and it's as easy as that There, and we spot welded another row. So now I just need to do these. So uh, yeah, that's how we do that. Okay, I cheated and I finished that. So uh, that side is done. I have to connect some of these, but um, until the other side is done, I'm gonna leave that because when all of this is connected, it, it starts to become, um, there can actually be 60 volts DC from one end to the other end when we get to that. Uh, so I haven't actually got an electric shock from this at any point, but the potential is there. I just pre-sorted all of these connections and uh, the ones that already had fuses over here which I had used the spot welder for I have um, 
resorted those as well they were spot welded on there now they are spot welded and soldered on there and i actually found a couple that well wasn't attached anymore and uh, yeah good thing to get those fixed and um, but this is tedious work it's really boring and uh, it's the reason why i don't have more battery banks than i have here in the darkness um, is the four battery banks that are up and running at the moment. I'm, I'm not using the power right now. We could turn on the inverter down here. Yeah, and it is complaining because the voltage is actually too high. Uh, the inverter does not like the voltage when it's up at, uh, at 56 point. I forget when it's... Well, it does it does supply power but when the voltage is up at uh, let's see 56.8 56.5 yeah it does not like that there it complains when it gets up that high so I need to go and configure this so that it doesn't bring the batteries up that high but yeah that is actually an issue that beeping gets annoying really fast and i can hear it from the living room so yeah but there is the four banks that i have up and running i've had a lot of issues with them after some of them has been sitting for two years so i have been taking one bank out and then checking it and taking the next bank out and checking that one i need to draw some power to uh, to get the water down <laughs> as this is the last battery that i'm going to be using those fuses on uh, at least until i I found out that it's a bad solution. Um, we're gonna try and have a look at how the new system would work. So I have that here. Um, the fuses will go on this side. And um, I would of course uh, check the batteries. And I think I'll actually do that because I don't wanna make a bad bank. But you have already seen that. So I just checked these 20 batteries and they're all fine. So um, yeah, this is going to be so much easier. Oh. So this is this is the fuse size. And this is the, the thing that I got off of battery hookup that they have specially made for this. And yeah, it looks like that. And the idea is that I'll connect. Well, this is a group that will be in series with this group and in series with the rest so something like that and i'll cut that and that's gonna be so easy to just mount that that's the plan anyway so i'll try and cut that let's see that's it's right there and there are some holes that you can cut after Let's see how that goes. Oh. There, one piece. So you need like seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces like that. Bent's really easy. It feels like I, I should tape it on do something to make it stay I have some of this tape that everybody laughs at me when I try to say what it's called so I'm not going to so let's put that on there and then we're just gonna spot weld all the fuses turn that on again there let's see how that goes that should be fairly easy. Okay, I just spot welded 20 fuses. That didn't take long. This is way easier. I just did one more. 
it's um it doesn't take long that's this is very nice uh, there is a meaning to the madness here because everything here needs to go in in series so uh, that's is that the right way no that's actually the, the wrong side we're looking at there so here is the most positive then it goes around the back and then it it connects this way and over here it's gonna connect so it's gonna snake all the way down here uh, 14 batteries uh, 14 sets of batteries each of them contains of 10 is gonna be connected in series with the next 10 batteries and the next and the next so that's um, that's why this is how it is this is snaking it through connecting the, the pluses here with the minuses here and so on so yeah that's that's gonna make it a lot more comfortable doing this I think I might even be able to teach my mom how to do this she kind of likes the idea of this as well Very quick, awesome. Well, I have the problem that I have this power supply, but it can only supply five amps. And I do believe this fuse does not blow at five amps, but I think we should just try it anyway. So uh, I've cut off a strip here to, to do a tiny test with. So it's gonna extract one of the fuses here ever so slightly so that we can get a crocodile lead on it. So we're gonna put minus on here and then we're gonna connect the plus lead can we see everything i think we can do it so that we can see how many amps we are drawing i could turn off the soldering iron so it's drawing 5.17 amps and it's not blowing is it hot no not, not hot so yeah they these fuses can can take a bit more than the fuses that i've been using so far i have just been using tiny little wires from like it's like a, can you even see that we could kind of see if we can we can get a connection to one of those oops and there it went focus let's see five amps should, yeah that is enough to to take that out of its misery so um these fuses will be able to hold some more current which is good and bad i kind of like the fuses to blow easily but i also like that this is very easy to work with from what i know i think about eight amps and they should blow if anyone knows that to be wrong please leave it in the comments this bms which is also a safety feature because it only delivers 15 amps if anything bad happens that draws more than 15 amps well this bms is not going to be able to handle it and it will also shut down i hope it's going to shut down not just leave all the magic blue smoke but but so far i've actually seen that they have worked as they should if the if the battery pack comes too much out of balance well it will actually shut the battery pack down and then it's my problem to figure out why it's not working but it's better than it's completely breaking the bank so good so stupid idea of today i have a fully charged battery here it has a capacity of 2532 milliamp hours i have a meter here uh, i think i've set it to minimum maximum so it should record um, how much power is going through and, uh, and I'm going to short out plus and minus here. So um, and we need you to see something. Camera ready. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, now. Okay. It didn't. <laughs> It did not 
blow the fuse it just lighted it up okay how much oh well, this fell off okay I didn't do that well let's see minimum 16.37 amps and it just light up the fuse I would have expected that to blow by then we're ready to try that again can you see the meter it would be very nice if I could just hmm, let's just go and go there it was it burned off let's see at what amperage maximum 20 amps holy moly so uh, yeah this tiny little cell delivered 20 amps and then the fuse broke that's a bit more than i was hoping for i must admit this is great fun until someone pokes out an eye we're gonna do it again so we're just gonna reset this 20 amps there it's reset safety slippers on and we're gonna make sure that you can see the multimeter and have my hands out of the way are we good we can zoom in more there ready go there it. that was interesting let's see 20 amps again the flames that comes off of this isn't that nice that's that's not a, a great feature but um, yeah the fuse does what it's supposed to do i guess this is on there really well i'm ever so slightly curious now we have short circuited this battery three times so what voltage are we at <laughs> it hasn't even dropped it's still at 4.12 volts <laughs> awesome I better charge it again <laughs> but still that's impressive and uh, this piece of crap uh, wasn't easy to get to stick but yeah there you have it so a little experimenting in the creepy basement and uh, yeah 20 amps that means that 10 of those cells will be able to handle 200 amps um, the BMS is not gonna allow that but still 200 amps that's insane um, well i guess it's not but i think it's a lot uh, i kind of like to keep it down a little bit so that um yeah everything is less dangerous if you keep the amperage down and if you make some um, fail safes so that if it goes wrong it won't go very wrong i like those tiny little wires to burn and then nothing more will really happen 20 amps it's ridiculous but i think that's where we're gonna end the video if you're interested in that spot welder i think i can now highly recommend it i'm very impressed tiny little affiliate link in the description and if you pick one up i'll be laughing all the way to the bank so thank you very much and thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye